continuing our analysis of musculoskeletal geometry, we've covered the basics. Now what I want to get to is the big pictures, that is joint moments, how we measure muscle strength and how the forces in muscles and the moment arms of muscles work together to produce the maximum moments that can be generated by muscles about joints. That's the plan, and then we'll conclude with details of how we model musculoskeletal geometry. So a couple things important to consider here. Number one is as we go through a range of motion, forces are not constant. The force versus joint angle curve is determined by two things. One is the force length curve of muscle, but then also how length is changing with joint angle. So what I'm plotting here is just a normalized value of uh, force here. And there's a peak force that is going to be when the muscle force peaks and it changes with joint angle because the length is changing with joint angle. So force varies with joint angle. Moment arms also vary with joint angle. Moment arms, remember, are not constant. You can see as we move through a range of motion, this single muscle has a moment arm that changes with joint angle. So if we put that on our plot, we can see that the moment arm is changing with joint angle. We have an angle where there's force peak and an angle when there's moment peak, but the peak strength, the peak moment, actually occurs when the product of these peaks. So the peak moment, because moment is the product of muscle force and moment arm, doesn't necessarily occur where the peak force occurs or where the peak moment occurs. And this is important because when we test strength in individual subjects, let's say I'm testing elbow flexion strength, I'm going to make a measurement here, a measurement here, measurement here. I'm going to get an angle at which that moment peaks. We can't assume that that angle is where the muscle's generating its maximum force. It's where the product of force and moment arm are the greatest. OK, so in general, the peak moment arm and peak force don't occur at the same angle because we're looking at the, the product when we measure moment. So that's if there's only one muscle. But the tru truth is that muscles operate in groups. For example, there might be six or seven muscles that cross and produce a flexion moment about the elbow. We might have a, a total joint moment curve here where the maximum moment generated by muscle A looks like this, muscle B looks like this, muscle C looks like this, but our nervous system is exciting all of these muscles at the same time and the total moment will be the moment generated by all of those muscles. So normally it's more than one muscle and the joint angle, joint moment relationships are the response of a complex set of relationships among the constituent muscles that cross that joint. So when we measure strength in humans, we're measuring a maximum isometric moment or a maximum concentric moment or a maximum eccentric moment. I'll show you maximum isometric moments here. So in this setup here, we are measuring the shoulder abduction moment. So we put an individual in a, a, a device, we put a load cell about the limb, and then we measure how much force he can generate. At the end of that limb, we know what the moment arm is, and so we can estimate the moment generating capacity. Same thing for elbow flexion that you see in the middle, and for elbow extension and flexion shown here. So that's how we measure the moments we can compare that with the individual muscle forces and moments to get a sense of how much each muscle is contributing to the total joint moment. So that's a good way to think about muscle strength. It's helpful to see this lecture, to read the book, and to do the open sim exercises so that you can see how individual muscle forces add up. Up in the next lecture, we'll talk about modeling musculoskeletal geometry.